Hello. What I'm going to do in this tutorial is something it's a little bit different to normal because I have a pre-made uh, tutorial here. Because I'm going to demonstrate how to create essentially how I've well how I've created a battle scene in the mod Project Brazil that is uh, in development at the moment. So what will be happening in this particular scene is you have to defend this relay station here against waves of savages who will be coming from these. You can just about make out these X marker headings down here. They'll be coming from there. And so the battle is going to begin when you speak to this NPC here, whose dialogue isn't uh, isn't finished yet. But basically, I'm now going to go through and demonstrate what I've done for NCR MQ02. So I've done this here. <coughs> the first thing that happens is this relay battle raging is a global variable and the reason I created a global variable to do that I went to gameplay globals and you can just right click new and create one like that. Um, I created a global variable because the player can play from either side of this battle and so by having this global variable it saves me having to trigger the battle by using any get stages because you could be doing NCR MQ02 or you could be doing Raider MQ02 or whatever the equivalent Raider number is. And the battle runs like this. We have, uh, after the battle starts, there's a 10 second break that a battle cry will play, which hasn't been recorded yet. So at the moment, I've just put in, I've just commented out, play the cry, which hasn't been recorded yet. And then savages start to appear and attack the base. So the way that is done is I've created some savages some unique savages and they're unique for a reason that will be demonstrated soon so I've created these guys who have an AI package which will cause them to, it's called relay attack pack and it's a use weapon at package here and they're going to be charging at these here and hitting them with melee weapons or shooting them with guns and attempting to blow them up and if you blow them up they'll fail but the way that the spawning works is I've created a system where they are randomly spawned at one of the random points and they run and attack the player at a certain amount of time. And there will never be any more than 10 on screen at once to prevent you just being absolutely flooded. And so to do this I've got a variable I've called savage limit, a variable I've called float timer, and a variable I've called savage randomizer. And that works down here in block to handle spawning savages. So if the global variable equals 1, if cry done equals 1 and savage limit is less than or equal to 10 um, and you can see here that cry done is triggered here uh, but this is a very specific example I'm just going to show you a generic example if you ever wanted to create like essentially a, a, a wave based attack thing so it works like this we have a variable here called relay timer which is below 10 set to be below 10 uh, and if it is below 10 it will be set to relay timer set relay spawn timer to relay spawn timer plus 5 and now the reason I've done plus 5 is because I'm using the default script processing delay which is 5 seconds and lower down I use the get seconds past variable the uh, get seconds past command and the get seconds past command if it's used twice in the same frame it'll return the same value as I've written here and because this value will be called every 5 seconds I've just done a plus 5 and this doesn't need to be as precise as what I've used below as I've explained in this comment here and so eventually it will get to higher than 10 and so once it's higher than 10 it will check if savage randomizer equals 0 and if it does which it will do the first time it runs savage randomizer will be set to get random percent and this will decide which type of savage spawns I mean, at the moment they all look exactly the same but that will be changed later on uh, they're wearing the default project Brazil underwear default faces the only difference is they'll carry different weapons but that will be changed later on and so if savage randomizer doesn't equal zero because we need to make sure that it isn't you know we need to differentiate between this stage and this stage and it's less than 25 so basically if it equals 1 to 24 pb relay attack marker dot place at me pb relay savage 01 and those markers are the markers that I pointed to over here so this one is PB Relay Attack Marker 3, PB2, where's PB1? PB1, the PB Relay Attack Marker 1 is the one that they will be coming from here. And now I've used a place at me command so it will spawn the base object so these won't have 
uh, like to find references or anything. Normally, the place at me is considered uh, bad etiquette because it can cl clutter up saves if large numbers of enemies are coming on at once. But this whole battle will only last 90 seconds and the dead bodies will be cleaned up next time the cell loads. So it won't blow anyone's save by doing that. And then the savage limit is set to plus 2. Um, this is the savage limit here which can be raised or lowered based on what people think is an appropriate limit later. Then savage randomizer is reset to 0. Relay spawn timer is reset to 0. And so that means that we're back up here at the very start because relay spawn time has been set to zero. So it will wait another 10 seconds. Then once it's got back up to the 10 seconds, we reset Savage Randomizer to zero, which means that it will be reset. So now it can choose from any one of these. It can be between 25 and 50, between 50 and 75, or between either only written greater than or equal to 75, because it will only go to 100, because it's get random percent. You get random out of 100. So that will be between 75 and 100, and that will add only one savage uh, in this example, and this one also really adds one savage too. So basically, so hopefully that is clear. Each time 10 seconds pass, a, the randomizer variable is set to any value between 1 and 100, and that value between 1 and 100 will determine which type of savage and how many savages are chosen. So we'll either get two of them, and there'll be one and two, two of them and there'll be three and four, or just one, and I chose two and three, just for no reason. Uh, I chose to do it in, you could do it in any values, between any values. I chose to do it up in 25s, just because it's simple, and it you know, doesn't end up with me writing out this thing endlessly, endlessly. And now the next part of the battle, which is unique to our battle, is super mutants will appear. So this is where the battle length variable comes in, right from the very top here. So the, the three variables that take place here are battle length, SM spawned, and SM's dead. And uh, what it will happen is, if the battle length is below 90, it will set battle length to battle length plus get seconds passed. And get seconds passed will record how many seconds have passed since the variable battle length was last called. So basically, the first time it will be, it will record much more precisely because I've used get seconds passed rather than plus five, and it will also record more precisely because I've used a float variable, which means that it can be a non-whole number, so it can be you know ten point five seconds, and it can be very very precise how much time has passed. I may raise this to greater than ninety, simply because it takes for uh, savages a long time to cover this distance. Now I did raise their run speed so that they run uh, a little bit faster, they run at 150% speed so they're tw uh, half as fast again as anybody else, but it's still does take quite a long time to get there. So I po might possibly raise this battle length. Once battle length becomes greater than or equal to 90, uh, these super mutants will spawn and SM spawn will be set to 1, which means that once it's set to 1 this bl block will be prevented from running because I've set it to equal 0. And once that happens, these two special super mutants will spawn, and they won't be they won't attack the generators. They will just charge to attack the player here. And I've created a script for each of the super mutants, which says begin on death set pb ncr mq02 dot sm's dead to sm's dead plus one. And each of the, each of the two super mutants has that because once sm's dead equals two. P Brazil Battle Raging will be set to 2, and the 90th stage will be set. And now once uh, Battle Raging is set to 2, that will prevent any more raiders from spawning. And quest stage 90 is activate the power relay. And the power relay is activated via a switch up here, which signals the end of uh, the battle, basically. Because... If it doesn't equal 90, nothing will happen. If it, if the stage does equal 90, it will the player will activate it. That's what activate player means. It doesn't mean that the player will be activated. It means this will be activated and it will behave as if the player has activated it, which obviously the player has done. Stage 100 will then be set. And when stage 100 is set, it ends and you get rewarded uh, 100 x you get rewarded 500 XP, which will probably get changed. I just decided on that randomly. And so then, uh, once the fight is over, there is also a possibility 
the player will fail the quest. And I mentioned earlier that the player is defending these right here, these relay boxes, and there are three of those. And if they all get destroyed, the player has failed. So if PB relay box of three dot get destruction stage equals four, and now that destruction stage equals four means it has been destroyed. It's at zero health, and it has exploded. It's performed its explosion. This, it's it's gone. It's destroyed. And so once all three of those are destroyed, it will simply set stage two hundred, and the player will fail the quest. And also, I should probably uh, set P Brazil relay battle raging to two just to prevent any more um raiders from spawning <gasps> i've made a mistake i've obviously uh i've written really battle raging instead of relay battle raging there you go so that was an example of some of my work in project brazil and how you can create your own wave based battle I'll briefly run through it once more. Um, I've created a series of variables. You can ignore these cro battle cry stage because um, that is unique to Project Brazil, really. Uh, but if you wanted to just have a generic battle, I've created a limit here so that no many than 10 can spawn. There's the relay spawn timer, the randomizer. And also I should note that um, all of the savages, the reason I created unique savages instead of using any generic ones is because they have their own script which is begin on death set uh, request dot savage limit to savage limit minus one so basically whenever they die the savage limit is reduced so and it will allow new uh, savages to spawn uh, so I've also added three preliminary savages here so the player is bored just waiting for more savages to spawn so as you'll see once the savage limit, if, has, savage limit has to be below ten the battle cry has to be done, but if you're just doing a generic one, you won't have the cry done variable in your thing. And I've created the global variable, so whatever your conditions are for the start of a battle will go here. Which, and these are my conditions for the start of a battle. And you have your spawn timer, which is however long you'll change that value to however long you want to wait in between from spawning. And once it's sp your spawn timer has reached its value, create your randomizer set it to get random percent create your conditions your difference values so if it's if it doesn't equal zero and it's below 25 i.e. is values 124 this happens if it's values 25 to 49 condition number two happens if it's values 50 to 74 that happens if it's values 75 to 100 your third thing happens and always remember if you're creating your own timer and randomizer based battle you should once you've done the thing, uh, reset your randomizer and spawn timer to zero. Uh, I hope that's clear because this is kind of. I've never really uh, done a pre made tutorial before. Normally I do everything step by step. So if that's not. You know, if it's not clear, criticize it and um, I, I won't do one again or I'll try and improve for the next one. But um, hopefully that was useful if you ever want to create a wave based battle. And hopefully that was interesting because. It's the Project Brazil mod, which you should be excited about because it's good, and hopefully will be out before Fallout 4, which is also going to be good. Uh, so, thank you for watching, and uh, goodbye.